Howdy. I am just sitting here waiting for my kids and um, figured I'd say a couple things. Um, yesterday, last night, I took my family to The Chosen, um, the season four, first three episodes of The Chosen. And I had some profound moments in there watching our favorite TV Jesus interact with his apostles and I I don't I actually don't have a really anything planned out except for that I knew that I needed to say something and that's something that I need to say is something about loyalty um, I've been thinking a lot about loyalty, loyalty to Christ in particular, not loyalty to, you know, whatever, just loyalty to Jesus. And I, I don't know if that is a combination that we typically think of. Um, I think we think of loving Jesus. I think we think of, you know, obeying Jesus, but, uh, the idea of being loyal to him. And, um, there's just a couple of moments in that show that I, I mean, like I said, I've been thinking about loyalty for a long time, but there was just a couple of, <laughs> pardon me, I'm having allergies right now. I'll, everything's warming up over here where I live and, um, whenever that happens, I get a cough. Um, anyhow, um, just thinking about um, how the apostles, and, and we see this in the scriptures, that it's not like the people who wrote The Chosen made this up. Um, you know, that James and John were like, we want to be the best. We want to be on your right hand. We want to be on your left hand. We want, you know, and then just bickering between the apostles. And, um, and there are just a few moments in, in the, the few episodes where the character who plays Jesus just kind of is very solemn and just like, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And they don't understand why I'm here and they don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> and when I say I'm bringing a sword, they don't understand what that means. They don't understand that I don't mean a sword that's going to cut Rome to pieces like it's just um, I don't really know how to say exactly what I want to say in the best words <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is something along the lines of if you don't know someone and you don't love them and you don't understand them you can't be loyal to them If your brain is clouded by traditions, if your heart is hard from pride or from thinking that you're the chosen one, you can't be loyal to the actual chosen one. Um, Sometimes I get this lonesome sadness that comes into my heart as I think about my dear loving brother and savior who was so alone.
and perhaps is still very alone when he looks down at the people that he has rescued here on this planet. And I just have a deep aching longing to not be the person who is arguing with my fellow disciple. To not be the person who is jockeying for the right hand or the left hand. To not be the person who doesn't understand. And he's invited us, the God of the God of our world has invited us to come to know him, to talk with him, to get advice from him, to help, uh, you know, to have him help us in our everyday problems and questions. He's invited us to do that. And we don't. I, I don't want to be that. I want to be the person who understands. I want to be the person who loves her fellow disciples and who says, no, you take this seat. I'll sit over here. I want to be the person who loves people the way that he does. Not even so that I can have the pleasure of seeing him smile with happiness at me, but just so that he has someone who is loyal. Someone who has his back. Like, I know he doesn't need that. He doesn't need any of us. But, <coughs> as another, <coughs> sorry, great <coughs> line from The Chosen is, I don't need you, but I want you. And he says that to Simon the Zealot. And... I know he doesn't need me to do that, but that doesn't stop me from wanting to do that. He is worthy of every attention. of every loyalty and I just felt like I needed to testify to that <coughs> and I'm going to let you go so I stop hacking all over the place because I'm talking but I hope that that's helpful or beneficial <laughs>